Now, since I've been posting Kali or Kali, Linux if you prefer videos, I've been getting a lot of feedback. I've also been getting a lot of questions. A lot of people have been asking me, David, I install Kali, but I can't log in. The password doesn't work per your video or per the documentation online. So how do I log into the new virtual machine if the password is incorrect? Or how do I fix permissions issues? I'm trying to install some software, but it doesn't work. So I can log in, but I can't run software such as apt get update or something like that. And actually it should be apt update today. Old commands were apt get, now we use apt within Linux, not just on Kali, but on multiple Linux distributions. So how do we solve the issue of permissions? Another big issue that people have been encountering is they install Kali Linux within a virtual machine using VirtualBox or VMware Workstation Player. They boot it up, but then they get an error saying VTX is not supported. There's some VTX issue on their laptop. So I'm gonna show you how to resolve that issue in this video as well. Okay, so let's get started. In this example, I've got three computers. I've got a MacBook, which is running Kali Linux or Kali Linux, once again, if you prefer, within VMware Fusion. So it's already booted up. I've also got two Windows computers. One has an Intel processor, the one on the left. The other has a AMD processor. And I'm gonna show you an issue that a lot of people have encountered when they try and boot up Kali Linux in VirtualBox or in VMware Workstation Player. So I'm gonna show you multiple issues in this video. First one is a password problem. Second one is to do with root privileges. And a third issue is how do you boot up the image if you get an error saying that virtualization is not supported. Now, before we continue, if you enjoy these types of videos, please would you consider subscribing to my YouTube channel? Please would you like this video and please click on the bell to get notifications. That really does help me with the YouTube robots or the YouTube algorithm. So if you don't mind and you enjoy these types of videos, please consider subscribing, liking, and clicking on the bell. In this example, I'm running Kali Linux as a virtual machine within VMware Fusion on my Mac. Default username is now Kali, password is Kali. So it's no longer root and password of Tor, root spelled backwards. Default username is now Kali, password is Kali. This is explained on the Kali website. There are two blog entries. The first one talks about Kali Linux 2020.1 release. They also have this blog entry talking about Kali using a non-root default user account. In this blog entry 2020.1 release, we told that root is no longer the default user account. Root Tor is now dead. New username and password is Kali Kali or Kali Kali, once again, if you prefer. Another issue people are having is that when they try and run a command such as apt update, it doesn't work or apt install and let's say some type of application, it doesn't work. We get this permission denied error. That's because we are not using a root account by default. We're using a non-root account, Kali. So what you need to do is use sudo. Now this is the default going forward with Kali but it's been like that for a long time on Ubuntu and other Debian distributions. It's recommended that you don't use root for normal day-to-day -day use. So a non-root account should be used and then you only escalate your privileges if you want to or need to. So default username is Kali and now notice the command works. This is once again very similar to other distributions of Debian or Ubuntu as an example. So now, if I want to install an application, I need to type sudo apt install and let's install an application such as Yersinia. Don't forget to use sudo when required. So once again, don't forget default username is now Kali, default password is Kali, it's no longer root. You probably want to change your password, so use password, specify your current password and then specify your new password for your account. Now we told that the new password is too similar, so I'll change it. 
probably require me to use a longer password than Tor. So I've got to use a different password to Tor. But I've now successfully updated my password. Now you can, if you want to, escalate your privileges to root. The first thing I'm gonna do is change the password of the root account. I'll specify the new password. Password has now been changed, so what I can do is type su and put in my password. And notice I'm now root at Kelly. So you can escalate your privileges and become root if you want to, but the default is to use the account Kelly password Kelly. It's recommended that you change the password once again. Okay, so let's have a look at the virtualization issue that a lot of people have encountered. I'll start with VirtualBox. This is a Windows 10 laptop. So Windows 10, it's using an Intel processor. Notice the problem that I get when I try and boot up Kali Linux 2020.1 on VirtualBox. I get this error, failed to open a session for the virtual machine. When I look at the details, I'm told that not in a hypervisor partition, VTX is disabled in the BIOS for all CPU modes. So the issue here is you need to have VTX enabled in the BIOS to be able to boot up a 64-bit virtual machine. So I need to enable that in the BIOS of this computer. If you encounter a similar issue, you'll need to do the same thing. I'll show you in a moment how to do that. So that's an example with a virtual box on an Intel processor. Here's an example with a VMware Workstation Player. So the same thing, I'm gonna try and boot up this Kali Linux host and I get this error. Error while powering on, the host supports Intel VTX, but Intel VTX is disabled. Intel VTX might be disabled if it has been disabled in the BIOS firmware settings or your host has not been power cycled since you changed the setting. We then told how to fix this issue, but rather than just trying to read this, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now that's an example on an Intel CPU. Let's have a look at AMD. So here's another laptop. This example is running Windows 8 on an AMD processor. Similar kind of issue exists. I'll start up a virtual box and I'll try and boot up the Kali Linux host. Notice I get the same issue, failed to open a session for the virtual machine. Here we told that AMD V is disabled in the BIOS or by the host operating system. So once again, in this example, I'm not able to boot up Kali Linux because AMD V has been disabled in the BIOS of the laptop. Now in this example, I've got an Asus laptop. It's got an Intel CPU and I've got an HP laptop that's got an AMD CPU. The process that you follow will vary depending on the manufacturer. So on Asus as an example, I need to reboot the laptop and press F2 to go into the BIOS settings. On HP, I need to use F10 to go into the BIOS settings. So refer to the documentation for your manufacturer to determine which key you need to use to get into the BIOS or just use Google to do a search to find out which key to use to get into the BIOS for your specific laptop or computer. So I'll now show you how to enable VTX on a laptop that has an Intel processor, as well as a laptop that has an AMD processor. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is shut the laptop down. So I'm gonna click power, shut down, to shut the computer down. Laptop has been shut down. Now, because this is an Asus laptop, I need to press power and F2. So F2 will take me to the BIOS. And as you can see, I'm now in the BIOS of the computer. So they tell you which keystrokes to use. So as an example, right arrow will take me from one menu to the other. So I've gone from the main menu to advanced. And what I wanna enable is Intel virtualization technology. At the moment, it's disabled. 
So I want to select that option, once again using the arrow keys. Go to Intel Virtualization Technology, press Enter, and then specify Enabled. So what I'm going to do now is use the right arrow key, go to Save and Exit, make sure that I've selected Save and Exit, press Enter, and then press Enter again to save the configuration and exit. Laptop is now rebooted. And now I can enter my PIN and log in. And there you go, I've logged into the laptop. What I'm gonna do now is start VirtualBox. Select Kali Linux and then go to Start to start it up. And what you'll notice now is the virtual machine can boot up successfully. So there you go, Kali is booting. And I can now log in. Default username is Kali, password is Kali once again. And I've successfully logged into this virtual machine that's running on a Windows computer within the virtual box. Same thing will happen with VMware Workstation. Select the virtual machine, power it on, and I can once again boot up the virtual machine. I can log in, default username, Kelly Kelly, and I'm able to log in to this Kelly virtual machine running within VMware Workstation Player on an Intel laptop. Okay, so I'll do something similar on this computer with an AMD processor. Go to the Start menu, I'll select Power Options, and I'll select Shut Down to shut down the computer. Computer is now shutting down. Okay, this is a HP laptop, so I need to use F10. So I'll start the laptop, press F10. Okay, so something similar needs to be done here. I'm gonna to go to System Configuration virtualization technology. So virtualization technology is currently disabled. What I need to do is press enter, select enabled, press enter, and then I need to exit. So save my configuration and exit. Press enter to save the changes. The laptop is now rebooted. We can see that the HP laptop is booting up. This is an older laptop, so it's quite slow. Okay, I need to put my password in, press enter to log in. I've now successfully logged in. Okay, so I can start a virtual box. I'll select my Kali Linux host, and then I'll press start to start it up. As you can see, it's now booting up, I can select Kelly Linux, I'll press enter. We can see that the virtual machine is booting. Once again, this is a slow laptop, so it's taking its time to boot up. But there you go, after a while, it booted. I can log in with my username of Kelly, password of Kelly, and I've successfully logged into this virtual machine, which is running within a virtual box on a computer with an AMD processor. Okay, so I'm hoping that you've learned something in this video. If you have, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like this video and please click on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal, and I wanna wish you all the very best. I've been in your world.